All right, hey there, fellow coder. Let's get started with this uh, project, which is going to be uh, getting started with a brand new Spring Boot app. Uh, so I just went to start.spring.io, uh, and this allows you to sort of configure uh, how you want your project to get up and running. Uh, I tend to use Maven, which is a, a build tool that allows us to uh, manage all of our dependencies and whatnot. And if you don't know what that means, don't get too bogged down with that just yet. Um, so we're going to be using Maven. You can use uh, Gradle as well, but uh, I prefer Maven uh, language. I'm going to be using Java to do the coding. Um, the version that is being used, the default version right now as of the recording of this video in 2020, early 2024 is 3.22. And I'm going to name it whatever I like. So the group name here uh, is typically the name of the domain where it's going to be deployed backwards. So my uh, domain is coderscampus.com. Uh, so it would be com.coderscampus. Okay, so whatever the address is, whatever the URL will be, you just flip it around backwards. Uh, the artifact is sort of the name of this project. So the project that we're, we're going to be creating is a back-end project. It's going to be sort of a Java only. There's not really going to be a UI for it, a front end. Um, and we are going to be creating um, uh, an app that will be integrating with uh, an API. So we're going to be um, hooking our code up with someone else's code and allowing the, those two, you know, applications to talk to each other. Um, the code that we're talking to is uh, from Course Report. Uh, they're a website that is dedicated to providing uh, information and reviews on coding boot camps. Um, so I'm going to be integrating with Course Report because I want to be able to, uh, they have some, you know, advertising and stuff they do there. So I need to be able to pull information from the advertising that we're running on Course Report into our world. So uh, we'll call this the course report, you know, API integration. Not the sexiest name, but it, it, it'll work. Uh, description, you can put whatever you like here. Um, I'll just leave it as is. Um, packaging jar is the uh, default, leave it at that. And then the Java version, up to you which version you want to use. 17 is the current long-term supported version. Um, so and I think 21 is the latest and greatest. Ah, is 21 long? I don't think 21 is long-term supported yet. Uh, I could be wrong. I forget now with all the versions, but uh, 17 is the one I'll use. Um, and then if we want to use any other dependencies, so this is other people's code. If we want to inject other people's code into our code, then we want to do that. And yes, we do. So one part of this application is that we're going to be using a database. Um, so we'll be using a, well, come on now, MySQL database. So we'll uh, add in what's called MySQL driver, which allows us to inter uh, integrate a MySQL database into our code. Um, and I'll talk more about what this project is going to be, uh, the details of it um, a little bit, maybe in the next video. But in this one, I just want to get up and running with the projects. So we have somewhere to start from and so that you can mimic this yourself. Um, so we'll have database. Um, we're going to be able to or have to talk to that database. So how we do that is um, spring data. So Spring Data JPA to be specific. Spring Data JPA allows us to uh, talk from Java to our database. So it, it sort of connects the two together, um, which is nice. So MySQL driver allows us to actually have a database. Uh, Spring Data allows us to talk to that database from Java. Now, if this were going to be uh, an app with a front end, we would um, include some sort of a uh, front-end library like a Spring MVC or something, but we're not going to have that for this one. Um, so that should get us up and running. And if you make a mistake and forget a dependency, it's okay. All this does is just creates um, lines in an XML file. So, uh, you know, you, you can just put it in yourself. It's no big deal if you forget something here. You don't have to delete everything and start over again. You know, you just have to look up um, the right dependency and how to add it into your uh, POM, P-O-M, which stands for Project object model, your palm.xml file. Uh, but anyway, I'm getting into the weeds. We'll just say generate. What this is going to do is allow us to download a zip file. So uh, let's put this, I don't know, on the desktop or something like that. And that will download the dis uh, zip file. And there it is. Course report API integration .zip is now on my desktop. So now what I do is you open up your favorite IDE. In this one, I'll be using IntelliJ. So I'll open up IntelliJ. And I will uh, essentially start a new project based on, off of that. So I'm going to, uh, I'm actually going to extract the contents of this zip file. Um, I'm going to double click on it. I use something called 7-zip um, to uh, handle my zip files. But whatever, you know, compressed file program you want to use to handle uh, and extract the files from there, you go right ahead and you use whatever you like. Um, I'm going to use this to extract the, the contents of the uh, directory that we downloaded from the web um, into my git folder, which I think is in slash git, if I'm not mistaken. Um, 
yeah, so I have a Git folder on my computer. This is where I put all my Git, my Git projects. Um, again, you can put this wherever you like. I just like to keep them all in one spot. So I put it all into this uh, Git folder and I'll say, okay. So that is done. It has extracted it into that folder. Fantastic. Now I can go here and I can open the project. So I can, I can say open inside of IntelliJ and I can navigate to that Git folder. And uh, there it is, just popped up. Course report API integration. So that's what I just extracted into the Git folder. I extracted this and I'll say okay. Um, and then that'll open up all the code. And um, when it opens up the code, you'll see that there is some code that has been generated um, by that start.spring.io website that we were just on. So it has a source folder. Um, let me close the tip here. It has a source folder with a main and a test where you can put uh, tests. There's a Java folder with a, uh, an application.java file. Uh, we have an application properties file, um, as well as we have that POM file, that POM.xml that I was talking about. If I double click on the POM.xml file, this is what gets populated. So um, yeah, if you see here, the, well, rather this dependency uh, was the uh, Spring Data JPA that we added. So if I go back here, Spring Data JPA is right here. Spring Boot Starter Data JPA is the artifact name and it comes from group ID org.springframework.boot. Okay, so that's that dependency. And then the other one is the MySQL dependency, which is right here. It added that in for me. Um, so boom, we are sort of good to go up and running. IntelliJ is working hard in the background, realizing it's a Maven project. It's grabbing this POM file and, and working with it. If for some reason it doesn't work with it, you might have a pop-up here that says, um, you know, uh, build this as a Maven project. Or there's some button you can click down here when it pops up with a thing saying, it looks like this is a Maven project. You know, do you want us to treat it like a Maven project? You would say, yes, I want to treat it like a Maven project. Uh, and that'll bring up this Maven, this little M here in the side in the top right uh, that you can click on. And that allows you to see that you have a Maven project and so on and so forth. So that's how you sort of get up and running with your project. There's a ton of things that can go wrong in this in, in these steps. If anything does go wrong, if something looks weird, if it's not working the way you imagined it should work, then um, this is where you can leverage uh, something like obviously chat GPT. You go there and you explain to chat GPT what's wrong, um, or you go and you, you find some sort of um, you know a resource or community that can help debug this stuff for you. Um, at some point in the future, I'm going to be releasing uh, a way to get into a Slack community where you can reach out directly to me as well as a whole bunch of other students and get help if you're stuck on these kinds of uh, silly problems. So um, at some point, that'll be available. Uh, if you you know if you want to check out coderscampus.com, uh, our website will have something there where you know probably there'll be a link to a beginner's course or something where you can join um, a Slack channel or something like that. Cool. So that's sort of how you get up and running with the project. Now, step two is let me get into what what is uh, what's going to happen with this project um, and we'll start to talk about high level design so how we're going to um, you know lay out this this whole application what files are we going to have or a rough estimate of the files that we're going to have um, and how it should work so looking forward to seeing you in that next video